Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use compression in Logic. I'll be showing you the example in Logic, but this can be applied to any software or hardware compressor. So compression is a tool used to reduce the dynamic range of an audio signal, i.e. making the quiet parts louder and the louder parts quieter, bringing a more consistent balance to your audio signal. It's used to make something sound more powerful and forward. So there are five parameters you need to know. The attack, release, threshold, ratio, and makeout gain. Ratio. The ratio determines how much the signal is reduced by. So for example here, if the ratio was on to 1, then the signal will be reduced by half when it hits the threshold, which we'll be discussing in a minute. So if the signal goes over the threshold by 6 decibels, it will be reduced by 3 decibels. So what a 2 1 ratio means is that for every 2 decibels the signal goes over the threshold by, only 1 decibel will be allowed over it. So if the ratio was 3 1, for every 3 decibels it goes over the threshold by, only 1 decibel will be allowed over, and so on and so forth. So 2 1 is quite a soft compression compared to a 10 1, which would be quite a hard compression. I usually use a 3 1 to 4 1 compression for snares and kicks, a 4 1 for most basses, and usually a 4 1 again for synths. It is best to play around with ratios on a signal and see what works best for your track, however. Threshold. So as I said before, the signal needs to hit the threshold for anything to happen. If the threshold is set to minus 30 decibels like it is here, the compressor won't affect anything quieter than that. The threshold essentially determines the dynamic range of the signal. The lower the threshold, the smaller the dynamic range would be, as the quieter sounds would also be getting a boost. Attack. The attack will determine how quickly the compressor goes from a 1-1 ratio to your set parameter when the threshold is hit. The full ratio isn't instantly applied when the threshold is hit. If the attack is short, the compressor will kick in very quickly, and if it's a long attack, it will be more gradual. I tend to keep the attack short at around 5 milliseconds. The release. This determines how quickly the compressor drops back to a 1 1 ratio when the signal drops below the threshold again. So it's similar to the attack, just the other way around. I keep the release short as well, usually at around 30 to 50 milliseconds. Makeup gain. The gain is used to make up for the reduction of the higher parts of the signal. This is also what makes the quieter parts louder. The setting is quite subjective as you'll need to increase this depending on the channel you've applied it to and if the compression is a hard compression or a soft compression. Hard compression will generally need more makeup gain compared to a soft compression. You've got to be careful not to get too carried away with this. I usually use about a 2 to 3 decibel makeup gain. So those are the 5 parameters you need to know in order to use compression and I'm also just briefly going to mention the knee. Most compressors come with a hard knee preset, which is good for drums as it's quite a hard sound. A soft knee gradually brings in gain reduction as the signal level increases and approaches the threshold. So I usually use a 0.7 knee for drums and basses and then a 0.4 or 5 for vocals, synths and any other softer extras. Compression is absolutely essential in production as it brings an overall balance to your mix, making parts stand out at essential points and makes your songs sound more alive. I hope this video has been useful and if you have any questions please leave a comment or message me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.